Okay, I guess back into the desert temple. Dungeon. I don't There's nothing I can spend this money on at this point. Hopefully the banker will give me something, but I'm not even sure what the banker will net me. Oh, nope, that's forest, forest dungeon. Because, like, at this point, I just have to go into a, a dungeon and... I just have to go into a dungeon and I end up fabulously wealthy. And so, like, the idea of... Uh, let's see. Okay, so we've got the first floor chest at the very least. It could be neat if I could hire hire heroes. Because they, they kind of established that there's this second class of people. Heroes that go into the dungeons for, for glory and whatnot. And, like, it would be so rad if, like, my character literally was, like, ultra trashed here at running these dungeons. I needed that. I'm glad I went for it. Because, yeah, this... Desert Rope. Which... How much How much of it do I need? Okay, I need it... Oh, I need it for my armor. Okay, so I guess I get to get, get a lot of those. Wonder, will you ever go back to the raft game, or are you giving a soft pass? I mean, we did like three sessions of raft. I don't, I don't think that's, uh... I don't think that really counts as a soft pass. We had a lot of fun with that. But we've also completely run out of things to do in the game, so it's kind of like, well... Uh, not really a whole lot of interest in playing more than that. If that makes sense. Screw you... I gotta maybe use the charge shot on this thing. I don't really know if there's much of a use for it. Yeah, I like Raft, but it, it desperately needs some some development before I'm I'm gonna come back to that. It'd be like uh it's like going Raft I'd put in the same classification as Astroneer. A good game that I really enjoy, but shallow enough that you know it's only worth playing kinda when it first hit early access. And then when it's, like, completely done. Whenever that's gonna be. Might be a while. Oh, shoot. That cost me one of the, uh, the shields. Oh, well. I don't, I don't care too much. Uh, hopefully I can find one of the challenge battle rooms and stuff. Let's see. If you hire heroes, the game wouldn't be a roguelike shop simulator anymore. It would be a shop simulator. But it's not even a roguelike shop simulator. It's, like, this game has very... It, it doesn't even qualify as a roguelite, in my opinion. It, it's roguelike mechanics are, are so minimalistic. And I'm not even trying to be derisive. I'm just saying, like, this game just uses procedural generation. It's like, um... Like, Heroes of Hammerwatch gets the roguelike thing kind of right, because... It's a giant nightmare to actually, like, try and, um... It's a giant nightmare to try and complete, like, a run in that game. Whereas, like, completing a run in Moonlighter is just like, eh, yeah, you just get the next tier of weapons and you're pretty much one-shotting everything. Um... And it doesn't even do the, like, Rogue Legacy thing of kind of giving you a, um... It doesn't even give you the Rogue Legacy thing of, like, scaling up the enemies and all of the other stuff. It's just like, yeah, you're just straight up stronger. Nope. Nope. Okay, well, let's go back to the question mark room. And so, like, yeah, I would, I would actually possibly enjoy it more if it had roguelike -y mechanics, but I guess the easy example would be this kind of uh, is as much of a roguelike as uh, Full Metal Furies was a roguelike. Which is like, yeah, I guess you die, you restart the stage over. 
but I mean that's like half of games. At that point, that's just arcadey. The one thing I don't like about the poison bow is that uh, status effects does not proc consistently. I'd actually prefer it if it did less damage but proc'd 100% of the time. Because then I don't feel like I'm gambling. I do not like gambling in games. Like, uh, even critical hits bug me. Nothing. Like, I will actively avoid... Okay, that was not worth it. I will actively avoid going for crit hit, uh, crit hit builds. Unless it's, like, super convenient to do so. Because it's, it's so much better in my mind. To, uh, to just go with pure full... Full damage, if that makes sense. And so, like, I will often... Oh, I'm gonna be on fire when I come out of this one. Yep, there it goes. The edge detection on projectiles is kind of funky, too. Okay, let's just wail on this guy. Because the sword does do a lot more damage than the bow. The bow just has, has the range that I need. I don't know. Want to come back this way? Nope. Oh, nope. He got me. I was going to try and... I was going to try and roll through him and stuff. Let's see, do I not care about the chest back there? I might have just missed it? I don't know. I'm kind of on autopilot. This game is... Um, it's interesting, but it, it really is just like, I'm here to look for a resource. Oops. Did not mean to fall into the pit there. And like, I've already fought these enemies enough to... I've, I've already fought these enemies enough that I'm not, like, immediately uh, interested in fighting them. Okay, I'll switch it with the dust. So glad that doesn't actually piss off the uh, the green ghost. Like now that now that I know you can switch them out, that's uh that's clever. A lot of rollerballs here. He is so inconsistent on. Whether or not my arrows will, like, uh, bash into something. Uh, like, if they'll, if they'll hit a, an environment piece in front of me or not. Oh, I actually got hit by that. Usually I can just, uh, approach them straight, and as long as I don't let them get me in the diagonal, I'm good. Who's this guy? He's like a weird clown thing. I haven't seen him attack yet. Ah, oh, come on! No, oh, my resources. They're gone. Is this a sparkle room? No, it's not a sparkle room. We've got a decurse. We've got a break. Let's decurse. No! Well, that's stupid. I decursed the decursifier. Like a dunce. Is it worth buying this game? Probably. So you don't seem to really like this game, do you? It's like I was talking about, uh, like, what, an hour ago or something like that? Um, this game has so much potential that I feel like it kind of randomly passed up on. And it didn't, like, sometimes I'll, like, disagree with, like, where a game went. But I feel like this game just kind of stopped its development early. Um, oh... And, like, stopped adding features 
earlier on than I would have normally, um... It stopped its development earlier on than I, I would have expected. Uh, and so, like, I kind of get this, like, feeling of whiplash playing it because it, it feels like there's supposed to be more of this game here. And then when it's, you know, when... Like, I've already finished upgrading uh, the town. And one of the, like, core features they were talking about in the Kickstarter was, like, you know, really getting to meet... Huh. I didn't know you could do that. I've never actually, um, sent one of them... Uh, falling to their doom. That's kind of neat. Um... But, yeah, they were talking about, like, meeting the townsfolk and, like, you know, getting to know them and, and stuff. Uh, like, you can go check the Steam page, but they don't really tell you what it does. It's just kind of like, yeah, you get to, you get to like, form a connection with the people in town. And I'm like, okay, so what does that mean? And the answer is, as far as I can tell, you can just talk to them in town and they'll kind of quip about uh, what what you've been up to. Like, I, I before, before we started, I actually decided to um, try talking to some people in town for a little while. Oops. Uh, and they mostly, like, one of the characters apparently is your, like, childhood friend, and she wants to see your rare, uh, like, the rare items that you find, and I'm like, okay, that sounds interesting. What does that do? And the answer is, uh, it doesn't. She, she doesn't actually, you don't show her anything. And if you don't talk to her throughout the entire game, nothing changes. She actively provides no benefit, apart from having a really nice-looking portrait. And it just... I don't hate it. Like, I do enjoy playing this game, but it, it's the difference between... Sourdough and Wonder Bread. Or maybe not Sourdough, just because that's a bit more of a contentious bread. I'm trying to think of how to, de uh, how to describe it. But it really is the, the difference between, like, a, a nice, good loaf of bread and Wonder Bread. Ow. Ah. Took a we Ah! Well, I can always drink some potions here. Or I could just head home. We'll see. Uh, I probably don't need any more fire jellies. I'm barely even producing potions to begin with. Uh, what's chilled lava worth? 2,000. Let me get rid of this, I think. Oh! Desert steel ingot. Awesome. Yeah, they forgot to salt the french fries. That's a weird description, but yeah. Flammable dust is not worth much. Insulating dust is 200, 2,000, 3,000. I'm assuming that's actually the resource I need. Shield lava is pretty good. That's, this is really expensive stuff. Oh, this, this stuff is worth nothing. Uh, same thing with the ma magnetic horse. At this point, I'm just going to head back because I've got everything I need. Uh, desert steel sheets. These are worth a lot. Uh, I'm just gonna sell the desert stone, because I've got more of these. Then we're just gonna head back. I took a bunch of damage there that I didn't need to, and if we're lucky, maybe I can, um... I mean, I've got a ridiculous amount of money. Maybe I can actually buy some of these resources, uh, from the guy, because I think he just sells them the moment you see them. Okay, so we still need more wire. Or, no, sorry, desert rope. So how much desert rope do we need? I need nine total, I need seven more. Let's try and go buy seven more desert rope. And one more ingot. Because if I could actually just buy my full complement of upgrade materials, that'll make my life a lot easier, and then I can just go back to focusing on getting money. Mm. Oh, inventory is full. Let's go dump that first. I guess the other thing, reason why I get kind of stuck on these is because I've hit the halfway point in this game and there's nothing new, uh, if that makes sense. It's... Oh, thermomagnetic engine. I guess that was something completely different. Um, I'm trying to think of a good example. 
you know how in um in Castlevania Symphony of the Night the, you hit the halfway point of the game and the uh the the castle flips over and then you know it kind of shocks you with like you know oh man you know the shit just got very uh very real very fast kind of if that I, hopefully that kind of makes sense uh for some of you at least that is almost what a lot of games should be striving for they don't necessarily need to have that like shock and awe factor uh but you need you kind of need that like midpoint a turnaround where you're like yeah okay my interest in this game is is higher oh 30,000 that's pricey okay these these are less um so i guess most recently uh, i was playing god of war uh Let's see, I need three more of these. I was playing God of War recently, and you kind of hit the halfway point in the game, and I'm not going to spoil why or whatever, but you go and get the the Chaos Blades. You know, Kratos' signature weapon uh, from the previous games. And it's such a dramatic turnaround. Oh, what's the banker have to do? I can invest money in him. Yeah, like when you become an adult in Ocarina of Time. Exactly. Or, I even, like, on a, on a, oh, jeez, this is going to be pricey. I might not invest in the banker this time around. Do I invest in the bow first? <gasps> okay. I guess this is where I need the money from. So it's going to be too expensive to get the these things immediately. I'm probably going to make a bunch of money tonight. Do I save it for getting a new upgrade for my weapon, or do I invest it? It seems like investing is the wrong, wrong choice in this one. But yeah, so it just feels like games, they don't necessarily need these things, like... Some games can just get away with being Wonder Bread the entire way through. I think um, Stardew Valley is actually probably the most perfect example of a game that remains Wonder Bread, Wonder Bread the entire way through, but you don't mind because it's such a pleasant experience that it's impossible to, to be mad at it or being Wonder Bread. Because it's just like, yeah, this is, this is just a light, relaxing experience for me to have fun with. Um, it was the today's speed powder day, yeah? Yeah, okay. Speaking of, I've got the training spear, which I can sell for probably a thousand. Okay, yeah, let's let's go sell stuff and then let's upgrade our, our gear. I'll probably hold off on armor. Because the extra HP doesn't matter as much as the defense, and I want to start uh, one or two shotting things if I can. I'm probably going to go for the bow first. Invest a little bit and see how it goes. Yeah, that's fair. Uh, let's invest 100,000. So he'll be back and things. Bow upgrade and enchanting might be OP. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. I like my sword, but the bow has been really helpful. Okay, so this is the old man. Back to the old man. Give him the speed powder. But I think in this... In this game's case, it desperately... I don't think it desperately needed, um... I don't think it desperately needed, like... You know, the... the Castlevania Symphony of the Night, like... You know, flip the... Flip the entire game over. Suddenly it's, like, ten times more interesting. But I think what this game needed was some really expensive stuff that wasn't equipment... To... Constantly pursue. 
and by more or less doing the same basic gameplay loop of just get like get better armor, get better armor, get better armor, uh, over and over and over again. Uh, get better armor, get better weapon, but none of them make like much of a difference. It doesn't feel as exciting. Uh. Because there's no there's no excitement when you get a new weapon in this game. It's just like, yeah, I got a new weapon. Because I, I needed it. Whereas, like, I cannot tell you how awesome it is in, like, more traditional, um, like Zelda-likes, for example, to, uh, to grab, like, a, like, the first time you get the hook shot in, um, the first time you get the hook shot in Ocarina of Time, the whole game just changes. All of these secrets that you've been... All of these secrets that you've been um, seeing, but never being able to reach, suddenly they're within your grasp. Oh, come on. Oh, sweet. Assistant had my back. Still mostly useless, but at least not completely wor worthless. I don't know. We we sold some of these before. Eh, Three thousand was a f fair price. What about the Desert Stone? 3000 was a fair price for those. Okay. Honestly, I'm probably just going to put the, um... the training sp spear in here. And yeah, I'm gonna have enough money for the bow upgrade and possibly... Uh, a little bit... a couple of enchantments. I don't actually know how many. So yeah, that's why I always get kind of harsh on these games, because I'm like, ah, oh, but if it had this, I'd be so excited for it. But no, it doesn't. And so I'm just kind of here playing it, and I'm like, well, I'm not I'm not trapped. I can stop whenever I want. That sounds like addict talk, but, um, you know, I can imagine the grass is greener. Holy crap. Everybody just wanted to buy everything. I guess I'll just be here. Glad nobody came to rob me during that that little segment. Like, what would be a really ridiculous thing that you could work up for? I'm. Just, what would what should cost like a million gold in this game and like drastically change your prey uh, prey style play style? Because, like, I think maybe part of the reason is uh, it's kind of hard to think up something uh, that would kind of, like, fit that role. A world ender. Actually, as hilarious as it would be, I think the thing that should cost, like, a ridiculous amount of money uh, should straight up just be the, um, a second backpack. You know, just... Just having a second backpack to save up for would be hilariously, um, I mean, it would almost be a, a insulting. You'd look at it and you'd be like, that's grossly expensive. Why would I, why would I pay money for that? And then you do it anyway, because it's absolutely worth doing. Okay, so I could upgrade the sword, but I think it already does a reasonable amount of damage to begin with. Let's go for the flamethrower bow. There goes half my money. Start collecting the resources for the lightning bow. A caravan trip to another con country. That'd be amusing. Just second game. Oh man, that's... That is such a... I'm not going to say classic example of what I'm talking about. But how many of you guys played uh, Pokemon Gold and Silver growing up? Probably a number of you, I assume. Gold and Silver is such a classic example for me of what to do in a game to keep it interesting. Because um, there is no indication that you go back to Kanto. You just do. 
And that was such a rad moment of just like, you know, holy crap, I have... This game just doubled in length, and it, it wasn't actually that. And it was also connected to, uh, you know, it was kind of connected because the predecessor was red and... Oh, I'm not going to be able to get the defense upgrade here. Hoping I could make a little bit more money. Uh, whatever, I'll be maybe fine. I've got a lot more HP at the very least. But like, so when I when I beat Elite Four in uh, Gold and Silver, I was playing Silver. Um, oh, I've got some goo that I can go put away. Uh, but when I beat the Elite Four and I went back to, um, I, I went, I hopped on the ship or whatever. I don't even remember how you got to Kanto, but you effectively just go to Kanto and it's like, whoa, it, it was awesome. And I keep waiting for games to do that to me, and they very rarely do. It makes me a bit sad. The remakes kind of screw up with the Pokemon levels at that point. I haven't actually played the... I, I never played Heart Gold and Soul Silver because I thought the little Poke Walkers were kind of silly. And I was in college, so I was poor. And I don't think I even had my DS on me at the point at that point. And then they were ridiculously expensive, and I was like, well, I guess I'm not getting Heart Gold or Soul Silver. I'm really looking forward to the Pokemon Switch game. Hopefully, hopefully they manage to make that live up to the platform. Ow. Because yeah, I would, I would absolutely love to do like a full Pokemon playthrough on this channel. I kind of started uh, Pokemon Uranium, which is nice and fun. But it wasn't, um, it was, the performance on it was garbage. Like, there was just one section where I was just like, yeah, this, this is non-functional. As usual, keep an eye out for sparklies. Like, I want a Pokemon game where you can straight up just ride all of your Pokemon. Or, like, each one of them has kind of, like, different effects in the world. Or maybe you just ride all of them, I don't I don't know. Well, if it makes sense. Riding a Pikachu just sounds like it would be straight up abusive. Can you put please put the other items on your shop table. You mean the decorations? I'm I'm capped out on decorations. I can't fit any more on. Ah. That fire effect. It, like, always runs out right before they die. Oh, no. Yeah, the bow, the bow is definitely rocking this at this point. I'm probably just going to stick with this. Wander riding the key fairy in Pokemon. I guess not exactly in the same vein. Well, no, I guess kind of in the same vein. I would love to play a Pokemon game where it plays kind of like, um... It plays kind of like a cross between Digimon World and Breath of the Wild, where you're just like in this big, expansive open world to wander around, and uh, it's like real time, and you're just giving commands to your Pokemon, like, yeah. Uh, or maybe not even commands, you just kind of use commands occasionally for the like stronger ones, uh, stronger moves. Okay. Yeah, I wanna I wanna play a Pokemon game where you literally climb the mountain as opposed to just kinda walk up paths and get attacked by hikers constantly. Kind of like an attempt to make it feel more like a living breathing world instead of like a uh well, just a very linear experience. Kind of the Pokemon Origin style. Oh, I I really liked the idea of that one. Until they started pulling up the whole Megastone lore and I'm just like, eh. Lost interest at that point. The Megastones never really appealed to me in the same way as other things. I'm going to lose my shields, but that that's fine. I'm more interested in trying a challenge room, honestly. I think actually Pokemon did kind of lose me as a... Ah, there we go. 
uh, did kind of lose me in general with the introduction of mega stones and ultimate skills and stuff like that. And I'm just like, eh, I'll just, I just like my old Pokemon. <laughs>